What's up, everybody? It's Kevin and Sergey once again welcoming you back to the channel for a first episode in a new series that we're going to be producing to help you learn how to play in Tarez version 2. Before we get too deep into the rules, let's give you a brief introduction to the game system of Antares 2. Antares 2 is a game system that was produced to help us explore conflicts in the far future over star systems that have been interconnected by an interdimensional nexus known as Antares. Factions battling it out across the entire Nexus are made up of predominantly pan-human factions, which are humans that are evolved far beyond our normal human form, and aliens, and even machine intelligences. Generally speaking, like with most war games, Antares is played between two players that each have their own force represented on the battlefield with models and different armies. The game is played out in a series of turns in which each player gets to participate, and it's either a set number of turns for each match, or it is just played until a player achieves some kind of victory condition. The forces that you'll actually be placing on the field are found in the force selectors for each army list. These army lists can be found and downloaded for free on the Antaran Nexus. Each player's force will be broken up further into what are known as units, and these units are going to have different characteristics and special rules based on each faction. Each of these units is assigned a value that basically determines its effectiveness on the battlefield. And these values can be found in the army list. Now, the values are used to add up each force to be a force level uh, that has been predetermined by both players. And this is to ensure that the game is as fair as possible. Now, in order to actually play in Taurus, you'll need several pieces of equipment. The first of which, and probably most important, is your order dice. Order dice are unique dice provided by Warlords Games or Skytrex that exhibit the various orders that you can perform in Antares on their faces. Each player is going to need their own unique set of order dice to differentiate the two factions from each other. In most cases, each player will need a single order dice for each unit in their army. However, some units provide two order dice, but we'll get into that more a little bit later. To utilize these order dice, it is suggested that you have a dice bag like this sweet one that was made for us by Knight Silver. But in all honesty, any container that is opaque, i.e. you cannot see through, will work. So if you have an extra shoebox, you could use that as an order shoebox. A sock? A stocking? Anything goes. Endless possibilities. It is also important to note that depending on the scenario or faction that a player is playing as, you may need a few extra order dice to represent different scenario, you know, weirdness, or maybe something special to do with your faction specifically. These order dice should once again be unique in their color so that you can distinguish them between the two being used for the forces involved. The dice that you will actually roll when you're playing in Taurus are primarily 10-sided dice or D10s, but you'll also need D6s and D4s. The rules will also call for D5 rolls and D3 rolls, but you can use a d10 or a d6 respectively, unless you're a D&D player, at which point you probably have a bowl filled with d3s and d5s already. Like in most other war games, inches are going to be the standard metric used when measuring things on the battlefield, and as such, you're going to need something to measure with, be it a ruler or a yardstick, something to that degree, but as per usual with war gaming, we always suggest using tape measures. Antares 2 also requires the use of a special marker known as a pin marker. Now these are also provided in plastic by Warlord or Skytrex games, but you could technically use any marker you'd like as long as you and your opponent understand that it represents pin markers. You'll also need several specific templates such as the round overhead template that represents explosive weapons and the crescent shaped template that represents energy fields. Both of these can also be purchased at Skytrex or Warlord games. You will also need several tokens to represent special munitions if those come up in your battlefield, but pretty much anything goes for that as long as your opponents know what's what. Moving on to the more meat and potatoes of the actual rules, each unit in each force is going to have a stat line. And this stat line is made up of several characteristics that basically determine how a unit operates on the battlefield. These stat lines can be found in individual unit entries in each army list, which once again can be downloaded for free from the Antares Nexus. The first characteristic represented on a unit stat line is movement, and this value represents how far in inches a unit may move with a basic move. This can be propagated out to understand how far a unit can run or sprint by either doubling it or tripling it respectively. 
Agility dictates how well a unit can either traverse difficult ground or how likely it is to become exhausted when attempting to sprint. Accuracy, as you would imagine, determines how likely a unit is to hit when firing in ranged combat. Strength, on the other hand, determines how likely a unit is to hit when mixing it up close range. Res is the characteristic that determines how hardy a unit is and is used when struck in any form of combat. Now, it is important to note that this native stat can be augmented by armor, in which case it would be the new value represented within parentheses. And this is done because some effects, such as Scrambler ammunition, can actually strip the effectiveness of armor away from a unit, leaving just its base res. A unit's initiative is used to determine how likely it is to pull off something called a reaction. Reactions are a little bit more complicated, and we'll get into those in further videos. The final characteristic, and arguably one of the more important in Antares, is a unit's command. Command is used when testing to see if the unit will accept an order, in the case of a unit with pins, or if you're testing to see its willingness to continue fighting, as in break tests. It's important to note a unit's command may be augmented by characters within the unit that have a higher command value or commanders on the battlefield that are within a certain range. The last thing that you'll find in a unit's entry is its special rules. And this can be pretty much anything from like a leader's toughness to any of the myriad of other special weird rules that the various aliens and pan humans have in Antaran space. The unit's stats will be referenced quite a lot during the gameplay in Antares because its characteristics are used anytime the unit is required to make a stat test. A stat test is determined by taking the associated characteristic, we'll just use strength as an example. You take any modifiers that would go to that, such as charging for instance, and that would determine the final number in which you would have to roll for it to be considered a success. And a success in Antares is any number rolled that is equal to or less than the number determined. A failure would be any roll of a value higher than the test required. Like in all awesome games, Antares utilizes critical hits and critical failures. Any roll of a 1 is always going to automatically succeed and will often give you some sort of awesome bonus. Any roll of a 10 is always going to fail and is often going to give you some sort of negative effect, such as running out of ammo. Oftentimes in Antares, you will be required to re-roll certain results, but it's important to note that you can only ever re-roll a fail or a success once. You can never re-roll a re-roll, and the re-rolled value is always considered final. That being said, re-rolling a failed test and re-rolling a successful test are two different things. And this can be best illustrated by the situation of a unit with a spotter drone shooting at a unit that is down. If a unit fires once and misses, they get to re-roll because of their spotter drone. If they are successful, the downed unit forces them to re-roll their successful hit, causing them to have a chance to miss. This is where it's not considered re-rolling or re-roll, and it's something that happens pretty often. often. Each unit's stat line does a lot in the way of differentiating it from other units on the field, but it is further characterized by its unit type. These types dictating how certain game rules and the terrain of a battlefield affect said unit. The most common unit type is infantry. These are human or human-sized aliens or machines that are also accompanied by uh, something called a buddy drone, or buddies for short, which are little probes that kind of flit around them. A subcategory of infantry is beast units. Beast units are made up of just creatures that are roughly human-sized, often being led by a handler of pan-human descent, and they are considered in many ways just like infantry. Weapon team units consist of a separate heavy or support weapon model and a number of crew. In certain situations, the weapon team can abandon its weapon or have its weapon destroyed, at which point they revert to being an infantry unit. Drone units are units comprised of one or multiple drones that kind of fill in the weapons team's roles in more advanced Centauran factions. They're a little bit hardier in the sense that they utilize a damage chart when they fail a res test rather than just being destroyed outright. And these units are oftentimes accompanied by their own buddy drones. Units represent humans or aliens riding machines or creatures such as personal skimmers or Antaran locomites together with their equipment. It's also important to note that mounted units can actually dismount at which point they revert to infantry. 
Vehicles usually consist of a single vehicle supported by buddy drones. They're usually equipped with heavier weapons and roll on a damage chart when they suffer damage. They are also often units that provide several order dice to the bag. Humongous beast units are really similar to vehicle units in the sense that it will be one monster that is equivalent in size to a vehicle, uh, but they are still equipped with heavier weapons accompanied by buddies and even sometimes more unique extras like hatchling swarms for the broodmothers. Probe units often consist of many aerial drones that flit across the battlefield providing utility for their armies. They function very differently than some of the other units in Antaran space, but we'll get into that a little bit more in later videos. Command units are any of the unit types described above with the addition of a commander model or the special commander rule. Any of these command units will also follow any of the special rules associated with their original unit type. The most complicated unit in Antaran space are definitely mixed infantry and weapons teams units. These units inherit a lot of the negative aspects of being a weapons team, such as being a little bit slower and clunkier, but gain the advantage of having a much heavier weapon than normal infantry would have. The final thing that defines units in Antaran space is its size, those sizes being small, medium, large, and extra large. Examples of this would be probes or small, infantry or medium, vehicles and humongous beasts can either be large or extra large depending on the vehicle. These sizes will be indicated on the stat line, most likely in the special rules. And if you see nothing that says anything about size, assume that the unit is the default size of medium. These size rules dictate line of sight, some shooting, as well as uh, the ability to get through terrain. Every model that is utilized in Antares sans vehicles and humongous beasts are going to be attached to what we call bases. These are common throughout all wargaming, and the size of the base kind of corresponds with the general size of the unit. These bases range all the way from 25 millimeters up to 50 millimeter bases. While being something very basic, it is important to note bases because many of Antara's rules are dictated in conjunction to the space that the base takes up rather than the model. We all know that we like to have models hanging off the sides with giant swords and all that stuff. So the game simplifies it by having the base be the thing that matters most. Models in each unit must be arranged in something called a formation. This means that no model must be without one inch of the unit as a whole. In units that include buddy drones or equipment, those models must be within one inch of a non-buddy drone or equipment model. Where that becomes impossible, say with like a new who that has a huge swarm of drones, uh, just do it as best you can. If for any reason during a battle a unit's formation is considered compromised, i.e. any one model is further than one inch away from the group, most likely due to shooting, it is fine to stay in that formation as long as you're doing something like a rally or a fire, but anytime the model or the unit moves next, it does need to move back into formation. It's also important to note that every single unit on the battlefield, friend or foe, must remain at least an inch away from all other units except in the case of like working out a charge where you're obviously right up against each other. It's also important to note that in Antares, you don't really worry about the facing of miniatures. It's assumed that most models can just turn 360 and, you know, point towards any target that they need to. Uh, if, for instance, it's not allowed to do that, it will be specifically noted in a unit's entry at somewhere in the rules. And here we conclude our basic introduction to some of the you know, basic concepts to Antares 2. Thank you for watching. Do not forget you can find all of this information in the free downloadable rulebooks on the new Antares Nexus, link in the description below. And if you wanna help support our channel in the easiest way possible, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and make sure you have notifications enabled. And as always, we'll, we'll see, see you on the tabletop. tabletop.